Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the stand for Children Radio Hour here on KKUP Cupertino 91.5 FM, the best radio station in the world. Today, we are looking to um, give you some information concerning a program that helps out young adults find jobs and employment of all things here in the Bay Area. They've been doing it throughout the country, but now they're uh, they're setting up shop here. It's called Year Up Bay Area, and we hope to uh, get some um, folks from uh, Europe to come in and talk to us about that. And, uh, you know, because they, they are a group of a group of folks that are doing a lot of work for the young people who have this uh, particular divide where they just can't seem to make it or break into the the field of trying to get a job. And uh, as a result of that, they do have, uh, they do need some help. So Year Up is there to do it for them and to give them some, um, well, some instruction, some help, and hopefully, uh, you know, make them uh, very successful in life. What they want to do basically is change the world, <laughs> if they could. And today we have, uh, well, in our studios here, we have, uh, first of all, Sahar yes. Reza, uh, Rezai. Rezai, okay. And you're the director of the Corporate Engagement and Alumni Success for Year Up Bay Area. Is that correct? Yes. That is and you're also an expert in business development and strategic account management. Is that true? Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> that, that's a mouthful. Now, get close to the microphone so I can hear you. Uh, well, let, let's begin with you. Uh, how did the organization get started? I mean, whose brainchild was this? Uh, sure. So uh, to give you some background, Year Up was developed on the idea of solving a business problem while addressing the social need. A major issue we are facing in this country today is a talent shortage. Thousands of companies are struggling to fill positions and having to reach overseas because they cannot find the right talent. At the same time, we have millions of young adults across the U.S. who have the drive, the motivation, and they have the talent, but they don't have the access. They don't have the access to training, to higher education. They don't have the access to professional network. Our mission is to bring these two groups together. We are a one-year intensive IT training program for young adults from low-income communities. We combine marketable job skills, a corporate internship, college credits, an educational stipend, and a behavioral management system. And our goal is to help place these young adults onto a viable path of economic self-sufficiency. We started in Boston in the year 2000. We are now in 10 states and 12 cities across the country. Here in the Bay Area, we opened our doors in San Francisco in 2008, and we just opened our second Bay Area site in downtown San Jose last March. Okay, and all that sounds great, but tell me, how does it work? I mean, you have <laughs> 18 uh, to 24-year-olds uh, that you're looking out, uh, trying to trying to identify, is that what it is, and then try to get them in the program? Yes, absolutely. So our students go through a pretty rigorous admissions process. They fill out about a 19-page application. Application. They have to have two letters of recommendation. They take. Uh, they have an, anywhere between two to five face-to-face -face interviews. They take an assessment test, and um, if they're admitted into our program, our, our program is broken up into two phases. The first phase is called the learning and development phase, where our students are in classrooms five days a week, taking a combination of information technology, business communications, and professional skills. If they complete the first six months successfully. Every student earns a corporate internship with one of our 35 partners in the Bay Area. Okay, and uh, how do you go through the process of selecting somebody? Are there some that don't make it, or how do you gauge it? Yes, so so I'd say for um, there's about uh, one out of out of every four students are are admitted into the program, and um, what we really screen for in the admissions process, um, I would say more so than anything is is the ability to overcome challenge um, because that's something that has come up time and time again that our partners are looking for in their employees. And also um, some interest in technology. Um, you may not have had formal professional training or credentials, but uh, young adults who have been breaking apart and putting together computers in their basements uh, since they were teenagers. Um, I think that's really, those are a, a two things that we really focus on and look for in the screening process. All right. We have one gentleman here who's, uh, I guess, went through the program or is going through the program. Uh, Pete Ortiz, is that correct? Yes, sir. I'm in the learning and development phase right now. Okay. Give me a glimpse of what your life was like before you found out about Europe. Well, before Europe, I was living on the opposite side of the opportunity divide, the side that nobody wants to be on. I was living my life working low paying jobs, sweeping floors, mopping bathrooms, not enough to even pay the bills, let alone put food on the table. 
me and my family, we've always strived to try to better ourselves, but it seems that only a certain percentage of society get these certain opportunities to move up. And now that I have Europe, it's given me that chance to prove myself. Now, how did you learn about the program? Well, I, I've been involved with a lot of uh, community activism. I was uh, in a Clean Slate program. It's a nonprofit community here. And they uh, Europe does uh, introductory interviews to nonprofits. And they came to Clean Slate, and they recommended me to Europe from Clean Slate. Yeah, I know we had one of your uh, fantastic representatives come over to our agency and talk about that. And, uh, boy, that uh, did spark up a lot of uh, interest in all this program. But uh, do you think that you had any kind of an opportunity while you were, you know, uh, slapping uh, dishes and, uh, you know, mopping uh, all over the place? Uh, did you think you had much of an opportunity for the future? No, I, I actually did not. That That form of living of indentured servitude is pretty much like waking up, going to work, getting a measly paycheck and maybe getting some money to buy a shirt if that that's about it no way for moving up they hire people to stay in low positions here so <laughs> it's interesting you should use the term indentured servitude because that's slavery yes basically. and you felt that way oh yeah i mean me me and my family we were trapped you know we we had jobs technically we did get paid but all of it was going to bills and taxes and Everything like that. Now, when the uh, folks at Europe told you what they were going to do or what you, you could do on your own, um, were you somewhat skeptical? I mean, did you say, eh, maybe, nah, I don't know. You know. Well, well, to be honest, I mean, it sounds amazing. So I, at first, I was skeptical. But when you think about it, I didn't have anything to lose. You know, and I feel that in order to become successful, you have to take risks. All right. Uh, you are listening to The Stand uh, for Children Radio Hour here on KKUP, Cupertino 91.5. Also, um, I wanted to remind you that if you haven't made a pledge already, please do so at 408-260-2999. We are um, discussing year up here with some folks who, uh, one that is going through it, one that is, uh, you know, basically very much, uh, I guess, devoted to the program, has been working uh, you know, tirelessly, I would imagine, for it, correct? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, July. Actually, this month is four years that I've been with Europe. All so. right. What is the payout for you? What did you get out of it? I mean, you've been <laughs> everywhere. You've done so many things. I understand you work for some really high-powered companies. What is the payout for you working at Europe? Um, well, to be quite honest, I feel like I when I when I joined the program, I joined because I wanted to give back to my community and I wanted to look back on my life and be proud of what I had done. And um, I've learned now that I, I I actually have gained more, I think, from our students than than they've gained from me. Um, it's been a tremendous learning experience, and I I respect and value the friendships that I've made and um, just the success stories. They energize me. They're what keep me going. So it's really it's it's the students that keep me going. What kind of things do have you uh, gained from them? I mean, is it is it the fact that the, you're helping some of these folks, you know, uh, for a brighter future or what? Um, I think that's part of it. Um, so, so just seeing um, the ability to overcome ch challenge, and um, and I think also the ripple effect that I see. So we have young adults that come through our program, and you see two cycles later they have a younger sibling that's going through our program. Two cycles later, their friend is coming through the program, their cousin. So, so what's really been rewarding is seeing the impact of the work that we're doing, not only on the young adults we serve, but also on their families and in the communities that they live in. All right, Pete, you called this, uh, or you had mentioned the fact that uh, you called Europe a movement for the demolition of the opportunity divide. What do you mean by that? Well, the opportunity divide is pretty much how there's so many companies that need workers with a certain amount of knowledge. However, there's nobody with that knowledge so that they have to go outside the company to recruit employers. And Europe's coming and saying, you know, we have young people in America who are smart, who are bright who can do these jobs. However, they either don't have money for college or they just don't have the time in order to go to school. And they come and they take us and they give us, they inspire us to reach our full potential in order to acquire these positions. Now, we've heard over and over uh, President Obama talk about the, the uh, need for education for our young people because we're losing out in the, well, in the idea of the technology field. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Well, yeah, you, that's, that's totally correct. A lot of people 
a lot of people don't see the necessity of learning these skills, especially here in Silicon Valley, in the Bay Area. Majority of the companies you work for, you are going to have to have some idea of how to operate computers or how to use technology. And I think that this this training is very beneficial to to everyone's success. Now, do you have an internship now? Um, not yet. Uh, it should be coming. <laughs> Some people are starting to get their internships. We have people going to Google, going to NetApp. Broadcom, I think, was mentioned today. But um, I haven't found out yet where do I'm Do you have aspirations going. of where you'd like to go? Um, I like finance. We do have some partners that are with banking. But, um, you know, it is a technology program. So I, I also want to get into computer support, project management, maybe a little bit of business analyst, junior yeah, you, you don't want to go to Wall Street, do you? No, no. <laughs> uh, interesting, though. Uh, tell me about the, uh, the, the uh, I guess, the companies that are basically partnering with you on this thing. It's, it's an amazing list. I mean, you got Google, you got uh, some of the other big hitters around town. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've been very fortunate. Uh, companies in the Bay Area have really welcomed us with open arms. When we started in San Francisco in 2008, we actually we started off with five founding corporate partners. And as of 2013, we now have 35 corporate partners and have added the likes of Facebook, LinkedIn, Salesforce, uh, Wells Fargo, to name a few. Okay. Well, you also got, uh, this is one that kind of struck me. When it was interesting. Mozilla Firefox. I thought that was a uh, that was an internet uh, site, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. How do you get into that? Mozilla has actually been a huge champion of our program, specifically the director of IT, uh, Matthew Zaire. Um, so Mozilla has now been hosting Europe interns for multiple cycles within their IT department. Um, they're, at the end of this month, going to be taking on an intern to do project management. Um, we also have a few interns that have been working in their data center. And um, in addition to that, they're also, they provide curriculum for our students. So employees from Mozilla will come by and teach elective courses on networking to our Europe students. So they have been a huge champion, huge advocate for our program, and we feel very fortunate to have them as a partner. What about eBay? They, they <laughs> teach you how to, how to sell stuff or what? <laughs> Um, well, a majority of our roles are within the IT departments, um, so so I, I think um, <laughs> though we really value um, eBay as a partner, I think um, what our interns are focusing more on is is IT as opposed to sales. All right, so everything pretty much has to do with uh, helping these folks learn this technology, right? Yeah, I say it's learning the hard skills, learning the technology, but that's not it. It's also learning the soft skills that are necessary to be successful in a corporate environment. So when our students are in our program, they're they're also taking professional skills courses that focus on things such as how do you properly shake someone's hand, give them a firm handshake, look them in the eye, cubicle etiquette, appropriate small talk in the office, how to navigate a new culture while maintaining your authenticity. And that's really something that we've noticed uh, adds value to, to our partners and something that our managers, hiring managers, really appreciate um, because it's not only the hard skills, as we know, that are that is necessary to be successful in a corporate environment. It's also being able to navigate different circumstances and having those soft skills. Now, there's something that I found a little bit, well, it was hard to believe, but boy, if you can do this, this is fantastic. 88% of your graduates are employed. Really, 88%. Yes, absolutely. So our, our most recent class, which graduated in uh, in last June, they're um, they're actually earning an average salary of thirty eight thousand dollars per year. And so when you look at that, when someone's going from zero or earning minimum wage to forty in less than a year, that really is a game changer. And it not only affects the student or the the graduate, it also affects their families as well. What do you think about that, Peter? Uh, that's amazing. I mean, growing up, where our I used to live, all my friends, what are they doing? Being janitors, cashiers. People are excited when you get hired at Safeway. And really that, to me, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not talking bad about Safeway. <laughs> but I want to aspire for something greater than that. And I think that this is a one-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me to make something of myself. Well, before this, uh, I imagine you were going through school, and I imagine you thought about what you wanted to do with your life in the future. But ending up washing dishes was not part of that, right? Yes. Well, me and my family, we had some finance issues. We um, almost lost our house twice. So to go to school when I could be working to support the family, it school was out of the question. I had to get a full-time job. Me and my brothers had to. We would take some courses, but we wouldn't be able to concentrate on our studies because 
all the stress that we were experiencing at home. Yeah, okay. Sometimes, uh, you know, when uh, when uh, someone goes through a lot of hard times, a lot of hardships, it does tend to affect the rest of the family, doesn't it? How did it affect your family? Well, you know, there was a point where there was a lot of depress depressing issues, you know, but I think if anything, it brought us closer together. And I myself believe I've grown from it because I know what it's like to be on the bottom. I've been on the bottom. And now the only place I could go is to the top. So I know what that option is. And I'm going to try everything I can with everything in my power to rise from it. Is your family pretty happy about the... Oh, the yes. Family? I mean, Europe changed me. <laughs> like, totally. I mean, I wear suits, ties. I, I talk with professional etiquette. Uh, I stand up straight. I think, if anything, it taught me how to be like an adult. A lot of these colleges, they don't tell you, you know, how to carry yourself. They don't tell you what you should value in order to move up in the world, you know, to straighten your priorities. But Europe, it does all of that. It doesn't just teach you about computers. It prepares you for life. Okay. And you also said you had aspirations. Uh, one in particular, uh, I understand, is that you wanted to own your own business? Yes. I've always wanted to own my own business. I, I wanted to own my own business, kind of like what Europe does. I wanted to go to the high schools and run programs to help the kids who are misunderstood. For individuals who are either acting up in class or falling behind in their grades, a lot of the teachers, all they do is target them. They just put them in detention. But when children are acting out, that's a cry for help. At least that's how I see it. They need special attention. And to set them out and criminalize them, that's just setting them up in a little group and to group people is terrible I think okay how soon before you uh, finish up with Europe I believe I got five more months five, oh fantastic oh yeah fantastic okay now here's the big question I've, I you know I looked at this thing and I racked my brain around it trying to figure out you can do this for free <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, um, so our program it is um, it is free. To, um, you you don't pay. We actually pay our, our students. Um, so our students are receiving an educational stipend every every two weeks, um, but that stipend is actually connected to their performance. So every Europe student that enters our program signs a contract, and if you look at that contract, it lays out the basic expectations of working in a corporate environment. You have to be here on time. You have to dress according to our dress code. You have to meet all deadlines. And and if a student fails to meet those expectations, we record infractions um, of increments of 15, 25, and 50 points. Every student starts with 200 points, and if they reach zero, they will have fired themselves from the program. And these points are also translated into dollars that are deducted from their educational stipend. So really, what we practice is a high support, high expectation model, and our students are earning their way in our program every single day. We are what we call a hand up as opposed to a hand out. Okay, but here again, where does the money come from? I mean, are you getting it from Buffett, or are you getting it from uh, you know? <laughs> well, we're we're open to it if he's offering. Um, well, we get um, so sixty percent of our revenue actually comes from our corporate partners. So these companies that host our our interns um, actually pay us for for our intern for our interns. So really, if you if you look at our, our program, um, we are nothing without our interns. Our, our success is based on the success of our interns. So if our interns don't do well, then we don't exist. In addition to the revenue that we get from our partners, 39.5% comes from fundraising. And only about 0.5% of our, of our funding comes actually from the government. So in a sense, uh, these folks uh, are making an investment on the young people coming through the program, right? Because uh, Absolutely. they're hoping to keep them? Mm -hmm. or yeah, that is, I mean, that is the hope. It's you, you try out an intern for six months, and it really, based on their performance, um, they are brought on um, either full-time or as contractors at the end of their internship. Now, as a director of corporate engagement and alumni success, um, 
you go out and talk to these folks, to these uh, companies? or Yes, yeah, I do. I've, I've been at the table for many of these conversations. And um, I could sit here and say that we had to twist arms um, to, to get our program off the ground in, when we went and met with the Facebooks and LinkedIn's of the world. But that wouldn't be accurate. Really, the, the truth is that once we sit down and we get in front of these executives, they get it. They, they look at us, and after 10 minutes of talking with us, they say, yeah, this makes sense. We have a need, and in addition, we're helping out the community. So we've really been fortunate here in the Bay Area to work with champions such as the, Tim Campos, the CIO of Facebook, Scott Cease from eBay, the CIO of eBay, um, among others, have, have been very, um, very big advocates of our program and have really helped us get us off the ground within the organizations. Now, you're beginning to accept applications for this coming year, Rob. What, uh, what should young people be thinking about? What are they going to do? What are the, what are the qualifications? So um, in order to be admitted to our program, um, you have to have a high school diploma or a GED um, and, um, and really just come by, join one of our information sessions. Um, we um, have forms that you can fill out and a Europe staff member will contact you. So really, I think it's just getting out and connecting with us and applying. Um, we have a class that's starting just this next September, um, both in San Francisco and in San Jose, um, and we are actively recruiting for that class as we speak. How do they reach you in San Jose? They can go to our website at www.europe.org, and they can also call us for additional information. All right. Uh, you are going to be involved now. You're going to be graduating. Then what? What are you going to be doing? Well, I hope to be uh, attaining a full-time position at wherever my internship is, and I plan on continuing my studies. I plan to go to San Jose State and study business communications. Now, do you would you recommend this to other folks, other people in your position? Oh, gosh, yes. I'm already a part of the um, student outreach committee. We go places and spread the word about Europe. Everywhere I go, I put flyers of Europe in my, ba in my backpack, hand them out to the community, all my friends. Actually, I, um, I convinced one of my closest friends to join the program. So I've been, I've been advocating for a while now. All right, good. So uh, if uh, somebody wants to try out, I understand they're, um, I guess uh, you're holding them every Wednesday at 2 p.m. These are the information sessions. You hold them here locally? Yes, we hold them in San Jose and in San Francisco. It's really an opportunity to get an overview of our program, um, check out the site, and, um, and really just talk to one of our staff members about, about the program expectations. Um, so, so please come by. Um, we are holding these sessions, as you said, every single week um, and are looking forward to seeing new recruits come by our site. Okay, and the more you get, the better it gets. The bigger it gets, the the more people you employ out there, right? Yes, absolutely. We're actually looking to expand um, in San Francisco in 2014 and in San Jose once again shortly after. Now, 18 bucks an hour, that's pretty good. <laughs> yes, yes, that's the average um, our, our, of our graduates um, within four months of graduating from the from the program. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's a big it's a big difference um, when you see a majority of our students that come into our program are either um, unemployed, not don't have any income, or they're working at minimum wage jobs. Well, in this day and age, I mean, we we get reports constantly about the fact that uh, there is no employment out there. The employment is pretty bad. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you look at nationally, um, there are actually about 6.7 million opportunity youth, meaning that they're not working and not in school. Uh, that comes about to about one in five. And across the country, employment among young adults without a college degree is at the lowest level it's been since World War II. And at the same time, there are 14 million jobs open nationwide. So, And companies are consistently failing to, to meet their hiring plans because of the difficulties they have with sourcing talent. All so right. really, our, what we're doing is, is really trying to close that divide and bring those two groups together. All right. You know, for some people, when they go into a program, they say, well, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can't do this thing. What, what? When you first arrived at Europe and you had to go to these classes or these sessions, whatever, what was going through your mind? Did you think maybe I'm not cut out for this or I can't do it? Or Absolutely not. Um, I think that the most important thing that a candidate for Europe should have is self-motivation. You can't defeat yourself before you even try. And also growing up in the environment that I did, I told myself I didn't have a choice to fail. I had to succeed. There's no choice. You know, you have to break that chain of living a low quality life for my future and for my family's future. You know, and it there there are days where we do get a surplus of work to do because it it tries to mimic 
uh, professional environment as much as it can, as it as you can. You know, we're in suits. We're doing actual reports. They teach us, you know, Excel, all the all the different software that we're going to be doing. We do. Um, we actually have projects, uh, cross-site collaborations between us and the San Francisco site. So, you know, if somebody could be intimidated if they let that factor come into them. However, there's a lot of support with the program. We're like a community. We 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 tell each other, even with the other um, associates on my level, the the alumni, we tell each other we're a family. You know, if somebody has issues getting there on time, we give each other rides. You know, we have study groups, all of that, in order to make sure that we all succeed. So there is a support factor there. Oh, yeah. Um, the program really helps us because the whole point of it is to help people who who have uh, obstacles. So, of course, they're going to be like, they're going to be conscious that not all of us have the opportunity to get there on time. I take the bus every day. They help me pay for my bus pass. I know other people, they say, oh, I don't have gas money. They assist them with that. There's there's so many ways that this program helps us. Because I wonder sometimes, uh, like I said, we get a number of reports here on the Stanford Children Radio Program about youth that are uh, basically frustrated. You know, they can't get a job. They can't get a break. They can't break in. And uh, they end up basically, well, uh, doing other things which don't prove to be very productive in their end. And uh, do you ever get peer pressure from other folks say, you know, hey, you know, leave it alone. Déjalo. You go somewhere else. Oh, uh, yes. I mean, I was in that environment before Europe, you know, frustrated people. You know, I live in a Latin community and around where I lived, you didn't go to college. You <laughs> just did things that weren't desirable, you know, yeah. things that weren't professional. And I kind of broke that chain. I I had to cut off some people that I considered family members. But I figured it was for the better of my future, the betterness of my future. Yeah, because I know a little bit about the Latino community in the, in the sense the, and it's just, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. They really don't want a lot of people to succeed. They want to keep them in their, in their own realm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it they say no. College is not for you. It's you know go go work here, go work there, that type of thing. Is that the kind of environment you're talking about? Yes, yes, exactly. You you didn't go to college. You got a job. Mm -hmm. In order to be, it's really like you get a job and you have kids, and that's just contributing to this cycle of people who can't take care of their children, people who can't find babysitters, people who pretty much are bringing people into this world and not really preparing for them you know they're not setting up a proper financial environment yeah which is what you need now in this day and age and uh you know i wonder uh when you're helping all these people because i imagine they're low income most of these uh young people coming through the program when you help them uh you're giving them uh i guess you can give them a leg up in the pro in in the program or what have you um, how long do you think this will keep going? I mean, what are the what are the plans for the future? Are you gonna have to keep this going on until you get everybody in, the, in, the, in those uh, companies, or what are what are the aspirations? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I had mentioned, uh, currently we are in tw 12 cities across the country and we're looking to um, go deeper within the communities that we currently serve. We have an expansion plan um, that we're working on here in the Bay Area, um, as long as looking at other c cities in the country as well. Um, we're also looking at ways where we can partner with um, other educational institutions to really scale our model and go from serving a few thousand to hundreds of thousands per year. Um, so we do. We do have big aspirations and, and we're very confident that we can meet those in the future. Now, the, the way that we found out about the, the, uh, your program was that uh, you came to a, uh, and did a presentation for a nonprofit organization. Is, uh, is that what you're doing in a sense? You want everybody to learn about that in that way? Or just anybody can, can apply? Uh, yeah, well, um, so we do outreach. Um, wh what's been really great about our program also is just word of mouth. So over 80% of our students actually come from from hearing about the program from someone who actually already went through it. Um, so they go through the program and they tell their little brother, or their little sister. We had um, one young adult who went through our program um, and actually while he was in the program, his family without notice was evicted from their home. So he was actually homeless while he was in the program. He worked so hard and did so well at his internship that that turned into a job. 
Two cycles later, his younger sister joined the program. She's now working as an executive administrator. Two cycles after that, their youngest brother joined our founding class in San Jose. So we really, we do see this ripple effect and, and it is affecting not only individual students, but also their entire families. And also with, with our corporate partners, we have partners that are bringing people into the Europe network. Um, so, so it's not only outreach, we also have a lot of our champions are, are spreading the word of Europe as well. Oh, that sounds like a wonderful, wonderful program. Uh, just got about a minute left. What can you tell us? Anything else you want to add before we go? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I think um, for the listeners out there, the way that you can get involved with Europe is 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 reaching out to us and hosting a Europe intern or hiring a Europe graduate, um, or um, also just coming by our site. If you talk with a Europe student, you will be shocked at how someone so motivated, so talented, so driven doesn't already have an opportunity. So come by and, and talk to the Peter Ortizes of, of Europe, um, and uh, and I'm I'm guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. Peter, any final thoughts? Yeah, exactly like she said, I'd be happy to talk to new people who are trying to learn about the program and assist in any way I could. All right. Thank you both so much, for uh, both of you, for coming on the Stand for Children Radio and informing us about, about this great program. And I uh, hope you have wonderful luck and hope you, uh, you'll come back again someday. Um, in the meantime, uh, with uh, that in mind, uh, I'd like to say, well, this is an organization you can lean on if you really want to. If you need some help regarding... Uh, Getting ahead, you can lean on them at the Europe program, Europe Bay Area, and uh, you can give them a call for any questions you might have. You might want to call Rod Tabares at 408-513-3004, extension 3548, or Nicole Samanes at 408-513-3004, uh, extension 3543 for more information on that. All right, well, that does it for this edition of the Stand for Children Radio here on KKUP Cupertino.